Hello, good morning and welcome to Newsfile. This is your most authoritative news analysis platform. And as you know, here on Newsfile, we put Ghana first. And today we are looking at how we can secure uh, successful elections, incident-free elections, questions of security coming up, and the EC promising that it, would, it should be able, uh, all things being equal, it should be able to deliver the results in record time within tw uh, 24 hours. Um, there are those who dispute that, but why? <laughs> um, you're entering into an examination and the examiner tells you that um, I'll give you your results the next day and you say you don't believe that, why so? So the EC is here uh, this morning to explain to us um, how they will achieve all of that. Uh, they put uh, the voters data part of it online and that has also brought about some controversy. Um, we'll get some explanation to that. But more importantly, our focus is on uh, getting the EC to help us and give us the assurances that is needed going into December 7. Uh, we'll begin with um, uh, Mr. Amidu, the former special prosecutor, <clears throat> issuing uh, a 25, you can call it a 27-page, 25 uh, page uh, reply to the presidency um, we'll ask if um, there is any poison in there as far as the elections are uh, concerned he has very harsh words uh, for the president himself describing the president in uh, you may say unprintable words <clears throat> but let's quickly look at uh, again in a legal <clears throat> light and this morning i say that we should resource the resource staff NCCE, resource staffed NCCE to give us hope for the fight against corruption. I say that if serious consideration is not given to an agenda to oil the resource staff civic educator NCCE to undertake vigorous education to change mindsets and attitudes in our schools and communities to revive the patriotic spirit of the Ghanaian, we have been known uh, to work consensuously and such that the school teacher who does not earn much but is content had great respect in the community. I'm not that old, uh, if you like, 45 years old, but I have lived long enough to know that there was such respect for a teacher, a community teacher, a local teacher, who didn't have much in terms of you know, money and who was content with the little that they got. There was much respect for them, rather than uh, an attitude and a subculture that we are seeing now, that we have come to glorify wealth above every virtue, and even without questioning the source of the wealth. So I say, to fight the corruption and win, we need to get back to the basis. But why is it that the Electoral Commission, for example, that does an event, an event in the whole of four years, may do just one important event, not an unimportant event, may do just one event. We spend millions of dollars, and yet we say that we believe that corruption is such a canker, three million dollars cannot be explained. It's lost to this nation and cannot be explained every year. And we want to win that fight. And yet the NCCE is so resource staffed. It is the body set up by the constitution to help us in some of these things. So we need to go back to the basis. And I also suggest that the president may need to give a certain posture that discourages particularly appointees and members of his political party from attacking corruption fighters and attacking journalists and media who fight corruption. Because the work that the media and the corruption fighters do is assisting the president to achieve his ideal, his goal of fighting corruption. Why then are these people and institutions attacked by his ministers and his supporters. 
They are supporting him. So why do they get attacked? The president may need a posture that tells these people that that does not work. So that's my take. Let's get back to the basics and that we do not need any new laws in this fight against corruption. I believe very much that we have sufficient laws already. We should just implement them. And one of them, a veritable tool, is in the Constitution, which says, if you have accumulated money, whose source you cannot explain as being as a result of income, that your salary is up to that amount, or you have, uh, uh, you have created some, you have done some property or something, assets, that we cannot trace it to your income. We cannot trace it to a loan that you have taken. We cannot trace it to a gift that you have received. We cannot trace it to an inheritance that you have. Then it will be deemed to be legal stolen as a public officer. So we take it away from you. A good example is what is just happening to the PPA, uh, sacked PPA boss. By the start of his office, he had not more than 30,000 Ghana CDs in his account. By the time the whistle was blown on him, he had in excess of 40 million Ghana CDs. Million, not thousand. So we take that money back. Thank you very much. That's your legal light.